bet on blue side with KT. And it was interesting hearing the SKT coach talk about the fact that they'd only shown their red side strategy in their series against Jin Air, and then they'd show their blue side strategy in this game. And pinching for Maokai was clearly their blue side strategy. As you mentioned, it just seems very difficult for them to get Civ and Maokai again unless they offer something super tasty up to KT as a first pick. I just don't really know what that could be. Yeah, I, I don't think it's anything at all. I think they're going to be the ones uh, scrambling here because Poppy and Echo have been banned once again, and presumably it will be that first pick Maokai. Question is, does SKT ban the Zillion again? I don't think you do on the red side. No, I don't think so either. At least you get Siva if you don't ban away one of Siva Maokai as a trade, so... You'd think they would take the Maokai if it doesn't get banned. Maybe the Corky? Yeah, you could ban the Corky. That's definitely an option. Graves. Okay. Huh. Okay. All right. They're thinking about KT's second round of picks with a ban like Graves. They feel... They know they're going to be taking Siva in their side of the draft, or you have to heavily expect them to do that. Jungle pulls at full power outside of that Graves ban. Well, I wonder if we're going to see something like Siva and Nidalee or something like that. Siva and Nidalee is a bit of an awkward combination, as we saw in the last game. Yeah, I guess that's true. Sure. You've got some decent pick right there, but generally speaking, if you want to go for the Nidalee, like Lucian's just a better AD carry in almost every single composition that you could uh, basically dream up. They think they're going to take the Trundle right now. There's no okay. reason to put yeah. the priority on the Nidalee at the moment, with Kindred and Nidalee both still available. Worth noting that Hachani's 10-game winning streak as the Trundle was brought to an end last game. First loss in the season. That's a good point. I wonder if someday we'll build a QSS slash engage better. <laughs> yeah, Survey says yes. <laughs> it's possible. Someday's second most played champion of all time is the Maokai, and it is his highest win rate of those top pick champions. I did the research earlier, Monty. Two picks over to KT Rolster. And what do you go with here? You just grab your bot lane. Try to reveal as little as possible. Lucian would obviously be the safest AD carry choice. Oh, yeah. As Definitely. an answer to the Siva. The question is, what do KT want to do this time? Because they're gimmicky, Fizz-centric top lane comps. So it clearly isn't happening here. We already have Maokai almost 100% confirmed as the top lane. They've got their pick of the junglers. And as you mentioned, there's not that awkward synergy with Siva to deal with. So the Nidalee, once again, I think is fine for score. And they just draft their support. And you, you were talking about someday having significantly better record on Maokai, but his Maokai record is actually worth discussing. He's played 28 games all time on Maokai, and he is 23 and five. That's really good. That's an over, <laughs> over an 80% wow. win rate on that champion in his entire career. And it's not like Someday's always been on teams that have a whole huge winning percentage. But if we think back to the time that Someday did win champions in 2014, uh, a lot of the play uh, that the KT arrows had in the finals were based off his excellent uh, Maokai teleports. And so. you might think a meta where top lane carries have been pushed out would be a bad one for Someday. You know, this guy who was one of those last bastions of top lane carries, whatever the meta, but Someday equally as adept, specifically on this Maokai. is a wonderful Maokai player. Really, really strong. Well, we could see... Oh, Elise, and maybe that Tom Kench. Okay. Uh, now I wonder whether yeah. or not KT is going to try and blind pick a GP in the mid lane or something like that. They could still go for the Corky. Uh, Lissandra, you would think, is the likely pick here for SK Telecom to round out their composition. KT needs some semblance of AoE damage because the moment the Tom Kench is drafted, they get the sheer pick on one target. For example, the Maokai Twisted Advance largely negated by being eaten by the Tom Kench. So you need some AoE damage. Corky would certainly fit that Vogue, but Tom Kench is, you know, SKT is the only team that's playing this in support role, and you're really starting to see why, because with Lissandra, Maokai in the meta, very strong targeted CC, uh, single target from a flank, one of the best answers is that Tom Kench. Uh, flashing right here, of course, the Vayne. A uh, typical counter pick into the Sivir. Could go for a range advantage here with the Caitlyn or the Lucian. Seems like the Lucian would be the safest choice, wouldn't it? Lucian is definitely the safest choice. He has the most even power curve throughout the game. Uh, can win that lane against the Sivir. Oh, wow. Going for the Callista instead, though. So Callista Corky locked in. Now, worth noting, this is very risky. They have a no teleport mid laner, and they're going to be almost certainly against double teleport on the side of SKT, a very strong ganking jungler in the Elise. Might be difficult to find places for Callista to farm because it seems like if we do see Mirror out of turret take, it's going to be very difficult to find 
space for Callista and Corky to both find safe farm. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of Callista Corky combinations in general because these champions sort of want to do different things. Sure. Like you don't have that same level of siege as you would if with Corky Lucian, for example. Uh, it, it, it does get rather awkward. Certainly they have a big front line to deal a lot of damage, but this composition, which looked like it might be like Nidalee, Lucian, Corky, which has a strong identity as a poke or a siege composition, kind of gets a little bit lost with this Callista. Not to say that it can't work, it's just less defined. Well, All right, they're going with the Zillion again. It's the no one dies, no one can be picked off comp from SKT, <laughs> Zillion. <laughs> Trundle disengage, Tom Kench note button. This is, uh, <laughs> yep. you know, you think about answers to what the Rocks Tigers are doing. The Rocks Tigers innovated Lissandra, Maokai, Siva, the double teleport and strong wave clearing mid. You put Siva in mid and wave clear and then pick people off for days. Well, good luck picking someone on the side of SKT. I also just in general dislike Trundle Top right now because the when you think about what Trundle Top is supposed to do, it was earlier in the season very successful when it came to 4-1 split pushing and just dominating in that lane. But ever since people realized you could just buy QSS, he can no longer win those duels, which means that once you use your QSS in a team fight, he's basically just a pillar bot. And that's fine if you're a support because you have very few resources. But when you pour all these resources into a top lane trundle, he's basically just a worse tank with less abilities than most of the other tanks. Now, again, this series has been a squeeze on the top lane. Echo, Poppy have been banned, Maokai has been first picked. So it does mean you kind of have to go to tertiary champions uh, that you may not like. But that's generally why I think it's just a stronger support pick than a top lane pick in the current meta. Certainly seems that way. Well, we'll see if SK Telecom can use it anyway to get the 2-0 lead over KT Rolster in this best of five playoff match. Or if KT can tie things up and make a very interesting game three. Let's find out. And welcome to game number two. KT Rolster versus SK Telecom. SKT coming into this one with a one game lead, but the draft a little bit suspect this time around for uh, SKT. Intriguing to see how the Zillion against the master of the Zillion and champions, <laughs> Flies Corky, goes. This was a case where Zillion was picked into Corky, so the laning phase, especially in the early levels, is going to be rough for Zillion. Could be. I just am intrigued because SKT, they, they put more of a priority on Elise, some action here early, on Elise than most of the other teams do. But what that leaves them with here is a basically like bang comp. And if Bang dies in any of these team fights, really, if Bang dies, how uh, how exactly yeah. do how you kill bang? the Bang? <laughs> the, the team does the team if, does no damage if Bang dies. The so. team does no damage if Bang dies. And yes, yeah. it it is easy to keep <laughs> Bang alive, like e seriously, easier than normal. That's but scary. still, you if Bang is dies or gets picked off before a team fight can begin, there is no way for SK Telecom to fight. They just don't have any late game damage. So. Again, just like all season, SK Telecom heavily investing in Bang. So it comes comes down to whether or not SKT can press R on Zillion, I guess, enough times. But KT has so much damage that late game, you may be able to burn through him a couple times in a team fight. Well, Chani and Arrow coming in to maybe harass this Gromp a little bit. Chani wants it. They want the Gromp bad. They come in. <laughs> Wolf's going to eat it, though. He's just going to take it. He's like, fine. My fine. I'm going to make sure I get this. Nice catfish on frog action right there. Yeah, if you're into that sort of thing, I guess. <laughs> I'm not going to judge. Is that in your Google searches, Monty, if I go on your PC? Well, I, I think it's going to be in most of our audience's Google I, searches now. I don't even <laughs> Sorry, know. Sorry, Google. I want to know what that comes up with in an urban dictionary Trend or Trending searches. Yeah. Catfish on frog. Action. Action. Can't Monty. forget the action. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's the whole point. Wolf just... I cast Barf champions. And minions of people. <laughs> Sometimes we forget the action. <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends on the meta, right? That's true. Rocks Tigers never forget the action. That's true. That's why they're my favorite team to watch right now. And sometimes I like to take a step back and wonder what the Rocks Tigers made of game one, Monty. You see? I think they were happy to see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, all right, whichever team. We can, we can handle this. Probably. Probably, but then again, you know, we 
We had similar thoughts last year, although they did certainly end the regular season looking much better this time around than last yeah, spring that's, season. That's the big difference, right? Yeah. And also, there, so. there hasn't been any giant meta shift like the release of Cinder Hulk this year to that's really throw a spanner in the works. Uh, different factors, for sure. Nobody throwing spanners in this game, man. There's a, no nope. Heimerdinger to be <sighs> seen. One day. No. no Probably day. not. I'm no. okay with no day. Well, it's a little bit of deep warding coming through right now for score. We remember the jungle matchup last game. There was very little lane pressure, and score power found himself to consistently a 30 40 CS advantage over blank. That was a very one sided jungle duel. Krug take coming in. He's waiting for the respawn there. Meanwhile, Blank in that side of the jungle, too. Score going to... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. That's not what he wanted to find. Yeah, Blank found Score. Score trying to get away. He's in a lot of trouble. Flash from Blank and Repel down for the execute. Cocoon helps secure it. First blood goes to SKD. Uh -oh. Fly finds Faker, though. Faker with the flash. And with Blank so close, it's just a bit too dangerous. I think he could have gone for it. I think he probably could have, too. Wow, uses that uh, heal to try to get out. And I think, has to burn his flash, too. I think you go for that one. But it would have been a one for two trade, though, Monty. Remember, that was towards Maybe. SKT's side Maybe. of the jungle. Yeah, but you're still going to be down a kill no matter what. And he had to burn both of his summoners anyway. So yeah. I think I think he flashes right there to finish off Faker. He saves his heal, and he goes one for two. The only reason why I don't know if that's as advantageous, remember that Faker can just teleport straight back into mid and push up the wave. I think maybe he wanted to back off, hope he had enough breathing room to push the wave in and not have to come in with both a kill and a significant amount of CS tonight. But the end result is another big advantage to SKT early. I hate it when mom and dad fight. <laughs> well, it's hard to know what to, the right call is in that particular situation, but losing the two summoners. It's true. Pretty rough. So. Well, it's going to be rough for Fly uh, either way now with the summoners down. Faker doesn't have his either, though, so the uh, mid lane could be ripe for a ganking if anybody wants to go for it. Fly doesn't punish the Zillion early, and you get away with a free laning phase of Zillion, then. So that's pretty happy times from an SKT perspective. And Score didn't have lane pressure in game one, dies in the enemy jungle in game two. So we'll see if that changes his playstyle, or if we'll just keep power farming and not impacting the lanes. Yeah, playing a yeah. little bit too cavalierly there into blank, just popping over that wall. <laughs> Cute. Johnny just stopping that up. Just be careful he doesn't get it. I was taking a lot of minion damage. Yeah, it's a little bit dangerous. Oh, oh, he got some yum yum. And Johnny. Well, he gets out of that. Still. It's a bit dangerous for a moment. Arrow was awkwardly tanking the whole range minion line for about 300 health of his health bar. That was. Hey, hey it's impact. impact. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Favorite son. GBM was here for Jin As match earlier in the week. Captain Jack was here yesterday, too, actually. Yep. Welcome back to Korea Impact. KT okay, so awkward trades, but CS, at least for them, is doing fine outside of Someday, who's actually been pretty significantly punished in the top lane. This Trundle, I guess the one thing you can say about Trundle with items, Monty, is that he is very, very powerful in the split push, so. Until the QSS hits. I mean, that's that's the big thing, right? Is that he uh, he's not going to be able to put on, on as much pressure in the duel. But once the question we hit is, like three to four items. But he hits those items, and it's not so much about killing the Malkai as it's killing the turrets, right? So even the QSS then isn't quite as relevant. If he can ignore the damages from the base values from Malkai, he's going to do a pretty good job of pushing down objectives. And okay, we didn't see someday do much with a pretty significant four-one threat in game one, but. Trundle can do that with AD items, and you can see with the pickaxe, he's definitely starting what we'd expect to be probably a ravenous Hydra, given the nerfs towards Titanic Hydra. Yeah, we'll have to see what exactly he goes for. Ganking time. Fly he uses that Valkyrie to get away. Cocoon doesn't connect. And it looks like it's going to be no kills for SKT in the mid lane, but it does force Fly back for a moment anyway. Two games of standard lanes, also very different from what we've seen across other LCS regions. True. Even in Champions, we've seen plenty of lane swap starts. Wow, nice dodge from Faker. A parting bomb for Fly on the way out. Oh, nice steal. Yep, Blink getting the blue buff. Score tried to steal back his own buff, but didn't work. 
Faker looks a little bit uh, a little bit better on the Zilly today, I gotta say. I feel like he's just landing things a bit more frequently than he was yesterday. But knowing Faker, he probably like went home and played like 30 solo queue games a Zilly, and he's like, <laughs> now I'm ready. Was that time for 30 <laughs> solo queue games? Yeah, yeah, man. Coleman's like, Faker, did you sleep? He's like, what is sleep? Uh, I guess he had some really low queue times then, too. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> we are in Korea, <laughs> though, Monty. Be fair. No, he, see, he just like queues up on like five different computers, and uh. one of them gets in. You just cancel the other ones. And there you go. I don't know if that actually works or not. I think it would just put all your challenger accounts in the same game together. <laughs> Faker could handle that. Wolf trying to handle a little bit of action in the bot lane. Gonna pop that gray health, but he's still in a lot of trouble. That's gonna be a kill for KT. Arrow picking up that one. Wolf had the flash to start, but couldn't flash away from the pole. But the moment the headbutt registered, no chance for Wolf to get out. It's a nice answering kill. They're gonna push up as well, KT. They have Callista, so there is dragon threat, but with Nidley recall, and they're clearly not gonna go for it right now. Not going to take that early risk. And back to exciting top lane wars, but still 20 CS advantage for Duke. First item completion for Trondle is just so, so important. If it is the Ravenous Hydra, and again, there is arguments for Titanic given that we're expecting full tank after this pickaxe item is completed, but Ravenous's power level at this point seems to be considerably higher, and it was always thought of as the stronger item early. It's really chunked out, but a little bit of sustain from score might allow him to stay in lane. Yeah, Duke did pop the subjugate right there to trade favorably. Somebody here just... Oh, so he's got no careful. mana. Well, there's no here mana. score, yeah. Uh, Duke actually could be in trouble here. Someday, staying alive for the moment anyway. Duke Horn Philly flashes for it. Knew he was going to trade it one for one. He'll actually ends up going over to score, but uh, at least Duke got it. It looks like it may be at the cost of Dragon. We're waiting to see if Someday is going to... Sorry, if Score is going to push out the lane for Someday or hold it. He does choose to push it out. That's also experience that doesn't go over to Someday. SK Telecom should be able to get the first Dragon here. And so taking a little bit of an early lead overall. Great cross-map reaction from Blank. Yeah. You can see right there, SK Telecom has taken the first Dragon two games in a row now. That's right. And they have that... Very high win percentage. KT is nearly undefeated when they take first dragon, though. And that's actually a big point we haven't really touched on yet, is that KT is, both these teams are very good at playing around the dragon. They are number one and number two in this league in terms of overall dragon control. So they get more dragons than anybody else. And KT, uh, they are extremely good at stacking to five dragons. If you, if you start that snowball early, they will finish you off most of the time. Seemed like that was the only way to win early in the season, but did diversify from there. With the pickaxe and now the Tiamat completed with the new build path for Hydra, it is confirmed to be the Ravenous Hydra for Duke. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, that statistic for KT2 used to be about 36% when they lost first dragon. They've actually dragged it up by about 10% just in the last yeah. couple of weeks of play. So they've been doing substantially better when not getting that first dragon late in the season. I mean, there's delay Fiora comps and there's the Poppy Zillion comps that play a lot differently. So they've changed the way they play and it's good to see that those metrics are at least inching towards parity. Well, Faker doing a little bit of damage to that mid lane turret. Arrow recognizes that there is a world where he will be forced to wave clear in mid, even with the no double teleport in his team. So he's gone for the hurricane first for the wave clear. And you're against Siva going hurricane on Callista first is usually a smart move, just so you can have some parity in the wave pushing wars. There's still no Siva though. Still no Siva. Oh, that's true. Few champions are. Really, only one champion is. Some Don't champions really do a better impersonation it. than Callista though. Well, pretty quiet game for a few minutes now, aside from a little bit of action early on. There's so much less to talk about than usual, though, because the lane swaps just haven't been on, so it's been standard lanes. We're still in Korea, where very see, rare to see the kills. I say things like that. Oh, nice attempt from Fly. I say things like that because usually when I do, then action starts happening. Oh, we're getting superstitious now? <laughs> it's, I, I'm just going off of what I have observed in my own history. It's great. Doe has been talking Casting to an eSports here. shaman. Yep. So uh, glad we've got... That's a different game. Correlation, oh, oh, sorry. correlation is causation now. That's right. Scientific method, thoroughly not applied. Mice come from grain last I checked, <laughs> so uh, this should work. 
That's right, flies come from rotting meat too. There you go, yeah. It's science. <laughs> Medieval science. Get your science out of my League of Legends, Christo. <laughs> well, if, uh, if what, well, yeah, I mean, that's how it is. If one of the players doesn't perform well, of course, they like let a little blood during the uh, commercial break, of course. <laughs> Got some release the spirits. Emergency uh, esports leeches. In that's, the back. that's right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait, have they Pretty already much. moved those to the new studio? Are they still here for oh, today's no, match? Oh, no, you're right. I think the eSports leeches are in the new studio. <laughs> oh, no. What happens if a player needs to be leeched? <laughs> Competitive integrity, OGN, please. Right, well, no. The teams have to bring their own emergency leeches. Uh, That's right. No, they, they keep the leeches locked away so that you don't put any scripts on the leeches. So of when course, they get plugged course. in, they don't download anything to the players they can use. <laughs> you know how it is. Scripting leeches. Yep. Esports problems. That's, that's right. Korea's really on another level. <laughs> well, we're just still kind of waiting for things to happen. No <laughs> dragon, so that's about it. Here comes Ravenous Hydra to turret damage. Yep. It's not on the screen, but let me tell you, it's a lot. It is. We can see it now. Wow, he may actually just kill this turret right here. Well, Malkai just doesn't feel like he has the vision someday to step up. Finally does, but most of the turret done. Yeah, he got most of it. Ah, the proxy started. Yep, doing a bit of dirty farming behind that turret. We know exactly where score is. It uh, won't be a mystery. Looks like KT score on the bottom side. Blank again, taking another objective. Get the rift this time. Both the dragon. Vigor actually going to TP in for this. Wow, all right. They're just going to try to get this dive onto Someday. The turret low. Someday gets stunned by the bombs. Of course, here comes Blank to try to finish it off, and he does. The kill for Blank taking some turret hits, but he'll is get out with like no health left. Is the investment worth it though? Fly's getting free time mid, doesn't have Trinity Force, but will still do plenty of damage. Fake has made two very assertive plays towards top lane in a zillion games. Left a lot to be desired yesterday, and I think they're losing out on the global trade here as well. Yeah, two for one, the turrets, and it's all in the cost of getting Duke ahead. Now he is very ahead, but I think that once we see the Iceborne and then the QSS come down, he's not going to be able to bully someday quite so much. Those dives are going to be much more difficult to accomplish underneath the turret, and a lot of that trading pressure that he has right now is going to be sapped away. Oh, no, the wolf. Oh, it did it oh. reveal them. I guess wolf not. Wolf does not reveal. Oh, well, a different wolf was uh, coming <laughs> towards to reveal them. So it did happen in the end. Plans upon plans for the wolves. Oh, oh! Double stun from Baker, nice. Forces the heal from Arrow. Yeah. Wow, getting the summoner out with just a couple Qs. Got a nice stun to Maokai underneath the turret there, too, on the dive. Yeah. But yeah, his, his Zillion really is looking better today than it was yesterday. Doesn't take long for Faker get it, to get his <laughs> eye in on a champion. Apparently not. The one champion, again, the one black spot was Twisted Fate, but very clearly recently his oh Twisted no. Fate prowess has been much improved. The black spot is still Zareth. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you know, a lot of those Zareth losses was Coma's fault. <laughs> <laughs> he, shouldn't have, he shouldn't have picked Faker into that. The blind pick first pick Zareth was, uh, yeah. was a dark time for SK Telecom's drafting phase. Yeah, I'm blaming Coma for that one. Fly now moving up. Looks like we'll see another turret trade here. Bang on that bottom side. Uh, Duke definitely not tanky enough to withstand any kind of dive. Not yet. Well, Blank going for another dragon himself, so SKT has been able to grab both of the uh, early dragons here. Blank playing really well this game. Yeah, he is. It's been the neutral objectives that actually SKT have picked up. That's the one thing they have really got heavily invested in. Two dragons and the Rift Herald, so they've been exclusive when it comes to picking up neutral objectives. It's been the outer turrets that KT have focused on. And all three down pretty early, actually. 16 minutes. Only uh, one turret behind, and that one outer turret that's left for KT is below half health, so... SK Telecom really not too far behind in terms of yeah, objectives. Getting this mid turret now is going to be really hard for SKT, barring any kind of dive, and they're just not tanky enough to do that yet. Mm. Just because you are going to have the Corky or the Callista here. A lot of wave clear available. Yeah, this is Hurricane yeah, first. Yeah. And you have to push up with a zillion. Sivir might go mid, but without TP on Faker to actually assign into the side lanes, that's another bit of a problem. There is also limited options for KT to answer what will eventually be a pretty strong 1-3-1. Of course, Zillian not really thought of as a 1-3-1 champion, but will provide wave kill. There's no teleport from KT, and you need to find by people as well. Oh, all right. Wolf saving blank there. It's just what does the lane assignment look like outside of obviously Maokai and Trundle battling in one lane? 
I don't, I don't think they're going to have to be too concerned. Faker isn't going to stick around and split push in a lane. He will kill turrets very slowly. So it should be a pretty quick just send somebody down there for wave clear. Until he finds a way to fit Lich Bane in the build. <laughs> the Lich Bane's still here. <laughs> yeah, I can All right. see it. Well, that see happens. It. I'll change my mind. Reserving judgment. Faker will make you eat those words. With a Lich Bane. That's right. Which uh, doesn't seem very convenient. Hard to eat things with a couple swords. You take that back. Right. Why is I think, it, I think it is just hard to eat swords. Why is uh, a couple swords uh, the bane of liches, by the way? That's my question. Maybe they're magic swords. Magic they're almost lich certainly magic swords. swords. Yeah. I think that's pretty obvious. There, you're told, Monty. Now you know. Why don't they do like extra damage to Karthus then? Well, nobody plays Karthus, so maybe it does. <laughs> we just don't know. That's fair. Hidden interaction. Hidden feature. Yeah. Thresh hasn't been played in a while, so... We know that Ghost Gangplank is not actually a real ghost. He's just a dude dressed like a ghost to be scary. It's not even that scary. Nope. He's spooky, though. A little bit, you know? Well, it's just like any other Scooby-Doo villain. It's true. Not really that scary. Well, SKT... Still trying to find an angle on that mid lane turret, but KT pushing into the top jungle now. That's going to make it even harder for SK Telecom to do that. Should we see if someday it just disregards magic damage and just stacks armor and gets a, this a QSS as his only magic resist item? It is some decent damage from Elise, but obviously just the Zillion and the double bomb's probably not going to be sent Malkai's way. KT going to put a lot of pressure on right now. Not really anything that SK Telecom could do to respond to this besides try and TP in. Duke, I think pretty far forward. Yeah, Blank is not really too close by. Teleport canceled from Faker. Well, that, yeah, this is so. actually a really good setup from KT. They pushed out the mid lane with the blue buff on the Corky and built up this side wave very methodically. Got everybody over there. And Duke, remember, really vulnerable to dives with this build. Yeah, he's going to go in anyway. Drops down the pillar. Arrow a little bit slowed. SK Telecom forcing KT away from the turret for the moment anyway. Just denying them a lot of farm. So, and KT slowly using the siege composition to chip away bottom tier two. And Duke's build is completely constructed to be in a lane against one person. When you send a team against him, that wave clear is pretty irrelevant. It's I not tanky enough to engage. Baker has to be there, too, if they're going to stuff this dive. Remember, he's a big factor in keeping people alive if, the, if they five-man dive this. I think they might just try to trade this for the mid lane yeah. tier one. Yeah, they will. Not a great trade, though. The only reason you do this is if you feel like there's no other way for SKT to claim this out of mid lane turret in any sort of even fashion. This does seem like a pretty severe price to pay, and although he'll push on a little bit, it'll obviously only be little incremental chip damage. Oh, it's actually getting to be a decent amount yeah, of damage on I mean, that turret. At some point, you end chipping and you just start exploding things. Yeah. yeah about two-thirds of the damage, so. Not bad. Really not bad. Huh, OK. So SK Telecom does manage to trade turrets. Still just one down. Getting that outer turret especially is really nice. And the gold is dead even. KT really needs to start thinking about this next dragon. They're going to be in a great place in terms of their power spikes. Couple items onto their carries. Will Callista find a time to shop? Has basically everything except the yes. recipe. So if she has that item completed for the dragon fight, KT are in a wonderful spot to contest. Oh, yeah, definitely. Look at that. 1600 gold right now. Needs easy, to shop now. Easy shop there. She goes back. And one thing we didn't discuss yet is that. Armor itemization is going to be very efficient against SK Telecom's composition in the late game. I mean, the damage is going to be marginal, even though Blank does have the Rhylize Crystal Scepter here from the Zillion and the Ouch. Elise in the team fights. Yeah, very true. Dragon's up in 25 about now. So KT can set up. Any flank wards for someday, or whether they'll just try and roll in as a five-man unit. Maybe they'll even be the team to leash the dragon. So far, SKT have had complete control well, around the dragon pit. They've already got one ward over by the blue buff on the SKT side, so that's something that someday could come in on. KT can play this patiently, though, because they will have the top lane pushing in ever so slowly. So there's no need to rush this. They just need to make sure that they get the objective in the end. But they have the better minion wave control right now. Everything's where they want it. And the longer they wait, the better it's going to get for them. Yeah. 
Vi has the package, so even without teleport, he's been able to maneuver this way, push it in, as you mentioned. Sixth man working for KT. Okay, they're going to go ahead on to Someday, and Chani with the big engage pulled out with the Fates call, goes back in again. Someday extremely low during that fight. Blank, Ignite ticking away on him. He survives, though, somehow, some way, and everyone kind of disengages. KT, can they claim a dragon? Doesn't look like they want to try. They need to go try to save that tier two. Or do they? They did waste the Chrono Shift. TP still up for someday. Yep. Blank survives in the worst way with his left Oh, Faker. Faker flashes over the wall. He has to get out of there. It's played by Fly, and SKT can't fight this anymore. Their Trundle ultimate is down. They don't have Chrono Shift. They don't have any of their ults available. And this is not really, they're going to be quite squishy with Duke's build as it stands right now. SKT's cooldowns are a little bit shorter than KT's big team fight ultimate, which of course is Hachani's ult, which won't be available. Both Bang and Faker's ult will be up very soon if they do try to re-engage around Dragon. Yeah, here comes Faker back towards the mid lane. Fly just zoning him out. Right, SKT's ult's back up. Yep, missing uh, Duke's ult though. All right, they're going for the Dragon. KT coming down, Faker's a ways away. He's gonna teleport in. Someday waiting for it, they want to try to steal it. They don't steal the dragon away. SKT gets it. Score a little bit separated from the rest of his team. And SKT, do they want to fight oh. this? Well, I don't know. Hachandi comes in. Duke in a little bit of trouble there. Bang doing damage from the side, but he's at half health. Needs to be careful. The first kill comes in in favor of Faker and SKT. Duke chasing Arrow and Hachandi away. Hachandi with that fate call gets the knockup. Meanwhile, though, Arrow hopping around. They get a kill. Oh, but Faker's going to bring him right back. Faker, though, with another kill on Johnny and SKT get the dragon get the tier two get the team fight win and they're gonna take a little bit of a gold lead on top of that SK Telecom really just took a very narrow timing window right there and KT should have been contesting that dragon sooner instead they allow SK Telecom to uh -oh. get those major old pullbacks back up cooldowns back up and that's going to be the result because they have more abilities to use it was so clinical at pulling the trigger literally as on the hunt comes up they go for the fight, even though Faker wasn't good, had to teleport into the middle of the team, because obviously Sinan's not going to be flanking, but you can see the payoff, just playing those cooldowns well. The flow on effect is barren. Yeah, very nicely done. As you see, the Fates Fall and the Unbreakable Will, really necessary for KT. Both down. Yeah, Duke gets his ult back up too, so right there. And that means that you see this re-engage. There it is, the Subjugate gets used again instantaneously onto Someday. And that's a nightmare. KT missed the timing window. They should have played more aggressively onto the Dragon earlier. And instead, SKT bops up the fight. Yeah, it's way too late for that Fates call and for the Unbreakable Will to mean anything at all. Really excellent timing from SK Telecom. I honestly thought it was pretty bizarre, Monty, because the thing that happened was that Blank was DPSed out and they drew out the Zillion ult for no result. Blank had to recall all the way to base. Faker had to go back too. And they didn't yep. They didn't start the Dragon. That's the most obvious window ever. The person being Chrono Shifted not dying is basically 15, 20 seconds of having to go to base, come back, and all that time was wasted by KT. Yeah. And they definitely could have won a team fight if all of their ultimates, I feel, had still been down. Well, remember, but Maokai has basically no yeah. ult cooldown, very short. Nidalee has no ult cooldown. Corky has no ult cooldown. They were team fight ready much quicker than SKT, and they did not. SK Telecom pressuring this tier two tower up in top lane now. Getting a lot of damage in on it already. And man, I, I gotta, I've been saying it all game, but Faker has been looking so much better on the Zillion. There's another stun on Chani. Chaining a little bit of that CC. Wolf trying to get up for a bite. A beef doesn't quite get it, though. And meanwhile, it's Trundle, who's always going to have the split push advantage against Maokai with this AD build with Baron buff minions. Guess so, so, yeah. It's going to be free objectives. They need to send more than just Maokai down bottom. Wow. SKT looking uh Why does it always go this way? Because it's SKT, man. That's why I always say never bet against SKT. It's not over yet, though. Achani comes in. Pulled out with the Fates Call, re-engage. They already kill Fly, though. Oh, boy. All right. All right. This one looks like it's pretty much over, doesn't it? In fact, this may be the game. Fly down, Hachani down for a good long time. They've got the Baron pushed. Minions. Yeah, they have the damage. Yeah, yeah they do. Yeah, and got uh, plenty of health still on the members of SK Telecom. Looks like they're going to be able to wrap up game number two a little bit quicker as someday tries to go for a last-ditch engage onto Faker. Arrow and score on the side. They do present a big threat. But are they enough of a threat? A SKT may not be able to finish this now. Minion Wave comes in. 
Fly coming up really soon, though. I think it's too risky. Yeah, they're backing off. Close call. Nice hold from uh, Arrow and Score there. One bad team fight loses. Oh, KT so much with the Baron buff and then the flood, the impact of the Baron buff. When you have Trundle with Baron buff and just with his natural yeah. split pushing advantage, this is nothing KT can do. They don't have as much wave clear as they did in game one because there's no Sivir this time. They're doing their best to hold the waves, but the price was thin across the map and the pick was really nice on Takorki and that meant the game effectively over from a KT perspective. It's really interesting how much of the game hinged really on that one fight and a very small timing window. Well, that's the thing about SK Telecom, though. If there is a game that hinges on a tiny window in a fight, SKT is the team that's going to hit that window nearly every time. That's what we've seen. They're going to go after Someday now. And Someday finds himself a little bit separated from everybody. Wolf doesn't even decide to swallow him. I'm so disappointed. Nope. Got to save uh, Bang, though. A little bit low. He's got the Zillion ult. He's going to survive, though. Not going to get to use that one. And now Score engaging really wants to kill Bang. He's going for it. Doesn't get it, though. A kill onto Faker comes in from Arrow. But is it enough? Nope. Fly too low. That's it. Arrow re-engaging with Achani using that Fates Call, but it's only the bot lane remaining. Arrow needs to be a hero here. Achani disrupting as much as he can. Finally goes down, and it's only Arrow standing between SKT and a Game 2 win. And I don't think that's going to be enough as they go in onto the second Nexus turret. There that goes. And SK Telecom, a close Game 1, but a very, very good Game number two, able to find that split second timing, get the big team fight win, get the Baron, get the game win. Under 30 minutes, SKT jumps out to 2-0, one game away.